All right, welcome back. We're going to continue on this code that we started in the previous uh, video. So before you continue this video, you should have your code. Um, as I show it here, when I click on run, you see the output. We Again, we covered that in the previous video. And our, our focus here is on C strings and uh, learning our skills here. So for this video, I actually want to focus on the command line arg arguments. So instead of having void passed into main, we're going to have an integer argc, which stands for argument count. And then we're going to have a character pointer argument array. And we're going to have an array of arguments, which happen to be strings. In fact, we see character pointer to an array of arguments. All right, so we're going to look at that. Now, before we do so, I want to make a point here. Suppose I have a character. We'll call this S1 for string 1. And... It's going to be an array. We know a string is an array of characters. And let's suppose this says hello. Okay, and we know from the previous demonstration a string is an array of characters terminated with a null. All right, just like here when we ran this demo, we saw it's terminated with a null. But you can also write a string like this character S2 equals world and actually notice I've got an error there saying redefinition of S1 well let's make this S2 now I've got a warning incompatible pointer so we want to put a star there and so now this becomes a pointer to the string these are two different ways of writing a string and I find there's a lot of confusion between this. These these actually mean the exact same thing. Why is that? Why does this string array and this pointer to a string mean the exact same thing? Well the answer is an array behind the scenes is actually this S1 is actually a pointer to the beginning of the array. So these mean the same thing. And in fact, let's do this. Let's do a printf. We'll say percent %s. Oh, let's do another percent %s. Backslash n. And we'll say s1 and s2. Now when I run this, notice we get hello world. Right, as we were expecting, we get hello world because this is a string and this is a string. And the reason I wanted to point that out, hopefully that makes what we've got here, this character pointer is the same thing I have here, character pointer. But this is saying it's pointing to an array. In other words, instead of pointing to a single string, is pointing to an array of these. In other words, let's do this. Let's have, <clears throat> I think I'll put it right here. We could have a character, oh, let's say a uh, pointer of colors. And I'll use V for array. Array, V stands for a vector. Um, vector and array mean the same thing but you'll see some people use V for vector so let's say we're going to have an array of these and let's go ahead and put them we'll say red green and blue so RGB character pointer we know a character pointer is can point to a string 
but we're going to have not just one but a vector an array of those so in this case we have three of those so what this means is if I wanted to print these out I'll come down here I'll say four integer i equals zero so we'll start with this one for i less than what we want to do one two three but we want to make our code where if I later go back and put four or five or six whatever we want this four loop to automatically adapt so how we can do that is say tell us the size of colors array tell us how many bytes what's the size of storing all this and th the whole thing and then divide it <laughs> by the size of a single entry so the size of colors v of we'll say zero the size of the whole thing divided by the size of one entry so that's what that that will tell us how many entries we want to go through here and then each time through the loop I plus plus and just to prove that this is doing what we expect I'll do a printf of the string backslash in and what will be the string it'll be colors vector of i alright so let's run it cool red green blue so a key skill is to recognize you can have an array of strings and in fact the reason I wanted to do this this is exactly what gets passed into you and it goes ahead and tells you how many there are of which you'll always have one you'll always have at least one why because the command itself is passed into you so let's do this. We'll say printf the argument count percent %d. Let's do the argument count. When I click on run, notice my argument count is 1 because you're going to always have at least this argument, at least the name of the command. So if I say main Right, argument of one. If I clear my screen and I say main one, two, three, well now I've got one, two, three, four arguments. And in fact, notice it says you've got four arguments. But to list out the arguments, all I have to do, instead of me having to do this, it's, it passes in our count for me. So I don't have to do this. It does it for me. So I could say for integer i equals zero, i less than our count, i plus plus. And we'll say printf percent s backslash n arg v of i just like we did colors v of i here we're going to do arg v of i remember arg v is passed into us All right, that gets passed into our main code so now when I click on run here we have an argument count of one here's our argument let me clear the screen suppose I say main red green blue ah check that out argument count is four one two three four so this is a good 
probably a good place to stop this video. Uh, the key understanding here is to know very clearly that when you're working with strings, the arguments are passed into you as a string and actually as a string array. So this argument V stands for argument vector. And as I said, vector is another word for an array. And I'm showing that here as an example. And we see here as it gets printed out. Okay, as always, make sure your code is doing exactly like I show this here. I may, I think the last thing I'll put, maybe to keep this uh, clear how we do each part, I'll say this is part two. So this, this was part two of, of the videos on strings. So now you can see what we did in part one and then what we did here in part two. Okay, get your code to do the same thing. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.